Okay, today I'm out in the shop and working on a farm way to go to get Good old U.S. Sam, Uncle Sam. This guy's big. And then the story of this guy, I was in a restaurant probably 20 years ago or more. And I saw a whirly gig up on the shelf and I asked the waiter if I could go up there and take a look at it. So I brought it down to the table and I opened up the napkin on the table as wide as I could get it and traced around the body. Arm waving, Uncle Sam. So I brought the napkin home, used it as a pattern, and I made the whirly gig. Arm waving whirly gigs are a little bit different. So here he is, here's the original. And these have to have a pivot point that's just right. Because as the wings, as the arms catch the wind, they tend to weather bank him into the wind. And then they'll, but they actually have a very interesting action when they're working right, because they tend to go back and forth while the, while the blades go around. And some of them, because of the pivot point, you can't, it's, you know, in the design, the length of the wings, the width of the blades, these blades are uh, just some scrap sheet metal. I think they were some old roof lashing, like uh, 18 or 20 gauge sheet metal. They can be anything you want. You can make them out of wood if you have a handy piece of wood that's thin. And you can see here this big pen. I've got a counterweight because I want these to be weighted. You know, if one's heavy, it's not going to blow unless the wind's howling. It's not going to spin unless the wind's howling. You see the pivot point there. Now, if these don't work, I had a little problems with this one. It was just mounted by itself. So a lot of guys, a lot of the old whirly gigs you'll see will have uh, a weather vane or an arrow on there. This is 90 degrees. I don't know if you can see this. But this arrow is 90 degrees to the blades. So it... it when the wind catches the end of the arrow here, it turns the whirly gig into the wind. The blade's 90 degrees so that it gets the optimum spin. And I found that because of the size of these flags on this whirly gig, it really likes it. It uh, almost needs this, this uh, tail fin, if you will, or rudder to steer it into the wind. So let's get started. And you notice I got my little friend here. This is a baby sea turtle hatchling. Right now, all over Florida, the sea turtles are coming up the beach to lay their eggs, and they are an endangered species. So if you dig a big hole in the beach, be sure to fill it back in before you go home so the turtles can get up to the beach easily and not fall in your hole or get slowed down. Because out of water, they really struggle. I'm just going to cut this out, and I'm going to make these Uncle Sam Whirligig plans available on my website, GW Hayduke. Here's my stock. I like these uh, purple ones because it, it's purple and when you glue it, when you put it on, it's purple. When it, you know it's dry, it turns clear. Uh, you can spray this with some uh, 3M TAC uh, adhesive, that removable adhesive, just spray it, something like that. Just anything to get it to stick down while you cut around it with the bandsaw. And you know, choose a uh, piece of wood that's clear of knots and cracks and checks because you're going to put some work into this and you want it to last a while. So there I have coated the, the um, pattern with some glue and I'm, I'm looking at the end of the board so I've got this board, you can see that that end sadly is uh, pretty bad there with some, with some checking splits so I'm going to use the other end. This is a nice, yeah. you can tell poplar has a little green tint to it, real nice work, wood to work with. A lot of furniture is built out of poplar. All right, there he is. Very big. So we'll take it over to the uh, bandsaw, cut him out.
and a little touch-up work to do. This blade is a quarter-inch uh, blade, wood cutting blade from Harbor Freight. It's actually pretty good. It's been used a lot. So you can see it's uh, not too sharp. When I go into the scrolling cuts, it tends to bind. Uh, you could get an eighth-inch blade for this, uh, but the quarter-inch works really good when it's sharp. It's not really as sharp as it should be. But, you know, that's not too bad. It didn't take very long. And now I'm going to cut out the arms and then uh, carve them to the aerodynamic uh, curve that they need to, to spin. All right, it's ready to uh, cut the next step. The next step is going to be the shoulders. They're just round pieces cut out of the same material for the shoulders to give the axle a little uh, bearing surface and to help the blades stand off from the body so they don't hit the body as they rotate. So we'll do that next. Okay, so now we're going to cut out the shoulders. They're indicated by circles here on the, on the body plan. And what I use with these, uh, these are actually like door hole saws. You can put them in a regular handheld drill. I like to use a drill press to keep them square to the work. This is uh, a cutoff from the, the body here. So uh, that's going to be just wide enough for, to make two of these. So save a little stock there. Size. It's, it's a two inch hole. This goes by the hole, not by what you take out of the inside. We're using the, the donut middle. Local yard sales, and it gets you a nice heavy duty used. Uh, press uh, you know, see if I can think of a recommendation. Uh, not, I'll just say this don't go to Harbor Freight for this particular drill press. It's, eh. Now, you want to you make sure your backing under here is flat. It's getting flat so you don't drill at an angle. You see I have a line drawn on this. If you, if you let this go all the way through and cut it out, then your hole, your donut middle, is going to be jammed up inside of this uh, cutter. And then you're going to have to, you might even have to take it all off and hammer it out. Or take a nail or something, a dowel, and hammer it out with these little holes. And it gets very hot, so you got to wait. So that's, you know, that's a pain. What you do, drill it down, you know, slightly more than halfway. That's this line flip it over and finish it, finish the last little cut, the eighth inch, just holding it. And that way you can just slide it right out. So that saves you a lot of time on these. Not a big deal, but you know. See the line there? Line, you flip it over, you can pick up a hole on the other side. There it is. You see how I got a lot of meat hanging out here so I can just pull that right off. Let's see how we did on that. Look at that. Beautiful. One more. Done. Oh yeah, that's warm. So, here we go. There's the, uh, what would you call these? Axle supports? Shoulders? Next we'll press on to the arms. We did the same thing on the arms. Here's the arms. Just cut them out of the pattern. So choose a nice clean piece of wood and glue this on and then uh, cut it out with the bandsaw. Like that. got number one cut out. Got to have two of these. They're identical. You don't have to worry about getting a left hand and a right hand because uh, uh, yet. But uh, they, they actually these the wood piece is identical. So I'm just going to use this piece. I'm going to sand it up and then I use this piece to trade for the second one. Before I, before I trace this on another piece of wood to make the second one, I'm going to sand it smooth so when I do the pencil I get a smooth line. Okay, this one's this one's done so I'm gonna trace onto the nice piece of wood the next one
So I've got that traced on there now. All right, that one's, this one's cut out now. See how it compares to the buddy. Here's how this is gonna work. Of course, one will go up, one will go down, put the axle through. Okay, the next step is to carve the angle into the blade. For this, we're gonna call them propeller blades arms, whatever you want to call them, but think of it as two blades of a propeller, like this. We're going to put this exact same angle on both blades in the same direction, because this guy is going to spin, he's only one propeller, and he's going to spin together. It's not like the bird, where you have to do them opposite. Don't worry about that, just do them the same. I'm going to mark this, as, just give it as much angle as I can. I, I think this comes in around 30 degrees. Don't worry about it. If it's not, if it's not 30 or, you know, uh, it's not going to be 45 because these aren't square. But just get enough angle on them, and they, they're identical. So we're going to mark this here. This is just to give you a, an idea of how they're carved. You know, you could carve this with a carving knife, a pocket knife, a draw knife. You can cut, rough cut it out on the bandsaw. It's a little dicey holding this at an angle. You might want to put your table over at the angle and do it that way. The little, be very careful if you do that. We're just gonna mark it so we know where to cut. So I've got the angle in there, and now I'm gonna mark, a, you know, about how much I'm gonna leave here. I'm gonna run a line down here, like this. Well, all right, so that's, that's the, I'm gonna call this the high side line and the low side line. Just run a line down there. This is a guide to give you a place to carve to. So here we go, and they're the same. The reason they could be the same is because we're gonna put them, we're gonna put them on opposite sides of uh, Mr. Sam here. And I wanna talk about that for a minute. When you go to auctions, or you look at auctions on eBay, and you really you see it says antique, antique worth you know, $2,500 or something ridiculous like that. If it is indeed an antique, you know, it, there's very few of them left because they just don't last. And you know, people would put these up on barns, and uh, they would just be in the weather for years at a time. And it's wood, so it would just disintegrate. Plus, a guy walking down the road and he wants to shoot some crows, and all the crows saw his gun and flew away. He's gonna want something to shoot at. Guess what? A lot of whirly gigs have bullet holes left in them. The metal ones that are left. But uh, having said that, you will find these Chinese copies that are cheap copies of a whirly gig for sale. And the blades are just like this, they're flat, right? Like this, they're not gonna, that's not gonna spin. Now, on the other hand, if you find one where the blade, one blade is flat, like this, and the other blade is 90 degrees to it, or a little angle, especially if it's a soldier whirly gig, some of those, like a, a Hessian soldier, a British soldier, with a sword, those are gonna spin. And one blade at, an, at, at, at 90 degrees to it. So at some point, the wind's gonna catch this. And then it's gonna go around, it's gonna catch the other one. And it's probably gonna spin some. If it's got a nice loose axle, and the blades are balanced by weight, it's probably gonna spin. Now I have my lines drawn on here. Always draw a line on your work. Have something to follow. You think, oh, I can eyeball it. And then you sneeze and you look back and your eye is going to pick up a new line. So if you have a line on there to follow, your eye is going to follow the line. You're going to get a much better product. Just on this. Uh, so the rest I'm going to do with a, just a carving knife and sandpaper or a sanding the sander. Uh, I'm going to just use the sander. I've got a new piece of sandpaper in there. It's pretty rough. So I'm just going to bring these down. Uh, where I want them, I want about three eighths inch here, and I'm going to bring them down with the sander. So we'll do that now. All right, I'm going to leave those for right now. So here's where we are so far. And 
I'm just going to hit this side and hit that. Yeah, okay, so those are the way they should be. We're going to make use of, we're going to need these spacers on here to give more room for those flags to swing by his hat and his legs as they rotate. We're back over in the garage where I have my uh, other workbench. And the next step is to make flags. The original that I found, the original before the game, I wanted to make a copy of it, had uh, flags. So that's what I made. So it's just three inches by five inches, and it's a piece of uh, sheet steel. I think it's something like roof flashing or um, ducting, uh, ductwork. Just, I like to go inexpensive. So you can use these flags, can be wood, they can be. I saw uh, one of you made with old license plates, which is pretty cool actually. Alright, so three inches, it's a little big. That's three and a quarter by five and a quarter. I'm going to turn it a little off. I'm going to use this paper as my pattern. Right, here's a piece of sheet metal. I think I picked this up at Lowe's. It's uh, yeah, 12 by 18 at Lowe's, a couple of bucks. Let's see if it's C. 26 gauge sheet. So what is 26 gauge? 0 0.024. So 24 thousandths of an inch. Really, the lighter the better. We'll attach on to that, and according to the drawing, here's the drawing. The original has the flag kind of out on an end. I think the way, instead of having it in the middle like this, I think it had them out in the, like on the end. I think the reason for that is that, uh, well let me demonstrate it on this, on the body. Let's clamp, clamp Uncle Sam in the, in the vise here. Alright, as long as the wings are in the middle, you get plenty of room. So I'm going to have to decide if I'm going on the edge here like this, or kind of in the middle. I kind of think it looks better on the edge. Okay, so what I've done here is I use the, the plan to mark the location with a sharpie here. The next step is to probably going to punch a couple little holes in here, drill some holes in the metal at the right location where that shows up on the back of the wood. So both of them are exactly the same. A little pencil. That's all. Awesome.
I'm just gonna punch these so I can, in the drill bit, it won't wander all over the place when I go to drill it. And I want to hold these tight and good. You don't want to hold sheet metal in your hand while you're drilling it because it can uh, it can hang up on the drill bit, and spin around, and cut you pretty bad. Some of these, like they have two one quarter inches. Uh, a lot of them are duplicated. Two quarters, uh, two three sixteenths, two eleven sixty four. So you really, eh, you don't get as many as you think you're gonna get. But actually, this has been a pretty good set. So that's uh, another Harbor Freight dude. Okay. So let's see. We got our holes. They're tiny. So I'll just drill some. I'll put some little uh, brads through there. Probably drill some pilot holes in the in the arm. Those. You know, I don't want to drill through my finger, so I am going to clamp this in here before I drill it. Right. I don't want to go all the way through. It doesn't matter if I do go all the way through, but. Alright, so we're going to uh, go ahead and put the shoulders on now. Pretty much in the center of the upper part of the body here. You can mark them from the plans. I've already done that. So I had a glue. This glue is almost out, but you know, if you do any woodworking, you know how price of glue just kept. This is the good stuff. It keeps going up. So I use some good old duct tape, piece of string. And I'll do a propeller on it. Get that last little bit of glue. So I'm going to do these one at a time. I'll drill the first one. I get it right in the right position where I want it. Clamp it. When that's dry, I'll drill that through. Then I'll use a quarter inch drill bit through there, or a piece of a piece of rod, it's a quarter inch rod, to line up the other one, and then glue the other one on. The shoulder disc is now dry, so I'm gonna. I haven't glued the other one on yet because I'm gonna drill it through with the drill press, and that'll give it make it straight, and then it'll locate the other disc exactly opposite, so that the wings will spin nicely. Just push it through there like that. Now, I've got a little Vaseline here. Just gonna put a teensy bit on this rod because I don't want the glue. Glue the rod in place. All right, looks like the glue is dry now. Uh, it's not dry, pure. It's dry enough to work with. And uh oh, should have put more Vaseline on. There we go. Not bad. So this is uh, this is my quarter-inch rod. So I'll just leave that in the vise for now. So now I'm going to make the uh, the axle rod. It's uh, five and a half inches. Go like five and three quarters. Need a little room for the saw curve. Next thing I'm going to work on, and uh, this is the reason I 
I haven't attached the metal parts of the blades yet because I'm going to take those off. I'm going to mount these wings, the arms, in the drill press. I'm going to mark off the center here and drill the hole for the shaft. Do that next. This is just a piece of 2x4 that I cut off very carefully. So these two surfaces are exactly perpendicular to each other. And this is just a quick reference to uh, do what the same thing the 1, 2, 3 block does. So cut it very carefully, and then you can hold it up to the light and see if there's, see if there's a gap here. And you can see you know, if it's not square. Just two sides, that's all you need. Doesn't have to be perfect all the way around, just two sides. And this comes in handy for, for setups. This square, or, the, or a carpenter square, it just, there's not a lot of room for it, and there's, there's nothing to clamp it. You want to clamp it. So if you have your own little block here that's square, you can just take a clamp and clamp this like this. And then you can come in here, and you'll know that your drill bit a spindle up the drill, and the drill bit is perpendicular to the axle. These are all uh, little accuracy tricks that will make your wheelchair spin in lighter wind. these clamped up. I've got them marked with the center holes. And then drill them. Okay. Got the holes drilled. And came out pretty okay. And uh, now I've got the shaft. I've got to put the shaft in here. Now one of these is going to be permanent. And I'll probably glue it with a, and then put a pin through it. Probably won't have to glue that one. And now. sure these are exactly flat. I'll probably do that separately. So uh, I've got to shorten the shaft a little bit. Shorten the shaft. I purposely made it a little oversized just in case. And then the landings gave guys I've got to take it back apart and drill. I'm going to drill a through hole through here for a 16th inch pin. And that will be removable and then I can take them apart when I need to work on them. It's getting there. Got the arms apart because I need to put a bushing in here for the arms to rotate. So I've got a piece of brass uh, tubing. This is KNS brass tubing. It's just uh, this is uh, KNS 930 seconds brass tubing, and so it has an inner diameter of one quarter inch. And these my holes here raise a little burr on them, so I'm going to have to uh, file those smooth. But uh, that'll give it a bearing surface to rotate on and make it uh, spin better in the wind. So I've got a 9 30 seconds drill bit. I'm just going to go drill through here. Clean it out. And 
and then I'll uh, measure it, mark it, cut it off. See if that makes any difference. There we go. Now she's coming. Mark that. Should be sharpie here. Mark it. I'm going to pull it back out and uh, cut it because if I just cut it with the hacksaw and left it in there, the edge would be really rough. And that would be, uh, that would not be good. So, I'm going to cut this off real quick. I'm going to cut it. Pushing in the shear line real quick. Just cutting to my sharpie mark. That's good. That's all it takes. And now I probably raised a burr on the inside when I made that cut. So I'll take my 9 16 drill bit or a quarter inch drill bit and run through there to make sure that there's no uh, there's no burr. I can feel a little burr there. And then smooth off the outside with the file. That should be sufficient. See how that works on the uh, on the arm. Uh, I still got that little burr from the through hole. There you go. Easy peasy, that's good. That ought to spin real nice. That's my bushing for the arms. Beautiful. make these really flat. Make sure you have clearance here for his shoulders. And that looks good. And then you put your pin in. And I was, uh, I found these 1 16th inch by 3 quarter cotter pins. So my, my idea here is to make this removable. Got the cotter pen in. And I'm not going to bend it over just yet. It's a pretty tight fit. So I'll come over here to the artificial wind and we'll do another test. Look at that. 